Dishonored 2 is pretty damn great. It's a game that has a lot of standout moments. That brilliantly savage first introduction to Delilah Caldwin, navigating nightmarish bloodfly nests, taking on this sublimely complex clockwork mansion, farting around with time travel, and stuffing your face with delicious Pratchett's jellied eels. But for me, amongst all this mechanical and artistic brilliance, it's the opening mission in which you escape from Dunwall Tower that stands out the most. It may not be as bombastic or structurally impressive as later levels. It certainly won't get a standing ovation in the way that Kieran Jindosh's sexy transforming bachelor pad does. But it does something that's quietly brilliant. It unconsciously teaches you how the game really works. One more time, old friend. I'm a fan of Dishonored 2's tutorial. It's clear, instructive and brief while also instilling a strong sense of Corvo and Emily's relationship, without dumping reels of exposition on you. In it, you are taught the game's core control scheme. How to move. How to jump. How to sneak. How to attack and parry. And most important of all, how to do wicked cool power slides. This tutorial teaches everything you need to know to get to grips with the game, whether you're new to the series or a returning fan. But it doesn't teach you what the game is, or what it expects of you. It's a bit of a struggle to put down in words exactly what makes Dishonored the game it is. It's ostensibly a stealth game with supernatural elements, sure, but there are others of a similar ilk that feel very different to play. It's also largely a game about the concept of choice, and the external factors that make the act of choosing difficult. Here we have a game that decks out the player with all manner of gadgets, superpowers and core skills that allow them to carve their own bloody path through the game. But more often than not, it puts roadblocks in the way that can't be overcome with mere brute force. If you can't go through it, you have to figure out how to go around it. And it's through this that we come to understand that what sets Dishonored apart is not the gameplay, but the game world. Which is unusual, because the gameplay is really, really good. But it would be nothing if not for a strong art direction that is essential to how the player reads the environment. Dishonored and its sequel are games where the best moments aren't necessarily the thrill of the kill, but in realising that there's another path you hadn't considered. One that might, on the one hand, take you away from danger, but in that same bated breath could equally throw you to the lions. Why does this matter in regards to the Dunwall Tower escape? Because, better than any other aspect of the game, Dunwall Tower sets up this more ambiguous sense of what the game is in a perfectly organic way. It's a design that forces the player to learn skills for their own sake, out of necessity rather than blind obedience. A sort of trial by fire, if you will. It sets the player up to understand how to spot hidden entrances, how they can find alternate routes to their goal as well as alternate fates for their targets. It helps the player understand that almost everything in the game world is a pathway, and this is without so much as a whiff of the outsider or those empowering supernatural abilities. And the thing is, Dishonored 2 could easily have covered these things in a tutorial. It could have guided the player through the whole affair, flashing bright neon signs pointing out all these more abstract features. But instead it opts to dump you in a locked room, with little more than your wounded pride, leaving you to figure out things for yourself, treating the discovery of the rules of this world as a kind of exploratory reward. It is because of this that Dunwall Tower's relatively linear first half makes sense. It allows for this sense of organic discovery without the risk of some players completely overlooking important aspects of the game. And when it feels like the lessons have been learned enough, it opens up. But in both linearity and this state of openness, nothing is thrown at you. You may not always have a choice, but that distinction is something you have to figure out for yourself. And this opening mission sets a very important scene for the game proper where these abstract ideas become an important fixture of increasingly challenging missions, ones that often break their own rules. This is why Dunwall Tower matters. It may not possess the spicy flavour and razzle-dazzle of later levels, but it has something far more important. A good tutorial is a boon to any title, but a game that allows the player to teach themselves? That's something special.